This is a view of Chapultepec Park in Mexico City. Now this park is just about three blocks from where I live. I go there often for just to hang out, uh, for a picnic, or uh, to just get away from the city. And that's a beautiful thing about Mexico City. It has this wonderful park and many, many trees. It's like a forest. There's many activities there on the weekend, especially on Sunday. And actually, the subway comes right to this park. So people come here from all over the city. But I just wanted to use it as a picture why I record some more information about retiring in Mexico City. Somebody asked me, how much does it cost or what's a minimum wage? I don't know exactly. I don't know if there's any restrictions. You know, Mexico is not like the United States. You know, there are rules and you must obey the rules. And as I mentioned before, rules are suggestions. They're not absolutes. And usually they, they are negotiable. And when I came here, you know, many years ago, uh, I just came on the free visa uh, that uh, they give you uh, when you uh, cross the border. And it costs nothing. Uh, so at that time, I, I went to Oaxaca and then later came to Mexico City. And I did that for many, um, many years. I came to Mexico for the winter and then back to the United States for the summer. Uh, I had a good place to go, and that was Santa Fe, New Mexico. So what was the minimum? Well, I was getting Social Security, and you can bet that that's not much money. And the way it worked that when I decided that I wanted to stay longer in Mexico, in you know, other words, like a year, year at a time because the visas that you get at the border are for six months and you're supposed to leave uh, and re-enter the country in order to extend it but you don't have to what you can do is go to immigration uh, here in mexico city and maybe in other towns that you might be in at some time but in mexico city you go to immigration and there we make an application for a one-year visa. And at that time, I, I had Social Security and I was uh, teaching English, which you are permitted to do here in Mexico City without any government permission. You just simply start teaching English. And there's plenty of schools where you can teach English. Uh, there's a terrible demand for teachers here. So... I went and uh, applied for the visa. And what I did then was I went to the American Embassy, which is in Mexico City. Uh, I live right behind it. And I went to Social Security and got a letter from them uh, of my income from Social Security. At that time, it was about $1,000. And uh, that was okay. They just want to make sure I was just not hanging out uh, in Mexico City. So each year I would get uh, the, uh, the visa. But when I decided that, okay, I'm here, uh, I have to go and get this visa every, every year, which is not a terrible task. It's fairly easy. Uh, I decided... Uh, to become a permanent resident. So I applied to become a permanent resident. And I think the, the requirement is that you have to have lived in Mexico for five years or something like that. I'm not quite sure of that. But at that time I had you know, lived in Mexico City five years. And I got the visit, you know, like a green card, 
permanent resident, so I don't have to worry about uh, getting a visa anymore. I, I'm, a, you know, I have every privilege as a citizen, just like in the United States, except I can't vote, and that I have to become a citizen, which I've never really decided to go do. But uh, it's no problem. You can have dual citizenship in America, uh, Mexico, and United States. I still have my passport from the United States. So if you decide to come here, don't, don't worry too much. You can work it out. Uh, $1,000 a month would, um, would uh, you be able to rent an apartment to live, buy your food, and go to restaurants and things like that in Mexico, especially now that the peso is almost 20 pesos to the dollar, which is like um, many years I was here for, it was uh, 10 pesos to the dollar. And so essentially it doubled my salary. Okay. So I would say uh, if you have any more inquiries, uh, let me know. I guess put your inquiry down in the comment area and I will answer them. Okay, thank you for listening. Uh, any help I can give you, I'll be glad to do it.